Is caffeine killing you? Or in the right quantities, can it make your life a whole lot better? It's in our morning coffee, our energy drinks, and even some of our favorite snacks. But what really happens inside our bodies when we consume caffeine? It's a question that intrigues many of us who rely on that extra kick to get through the day. And it definitely intrigues Larry. Larry's a 22-year-old college student and part-time barista. Like many of us, Larry loves his daily coffee and often finds himself reaching for a midday espresso or an energy drink to help him power through his studies and work shifts. However, he started to wonder about the effects of his caffeine consumption and how it might be affecting his health and daily life. Larry's day typically begins with brewing a fresh cup of coffee, a ritual he cherishes. Almost immediately after his first sip, he notices a significant boost to his alertness and his ability to concentrate. This immediate effect of caffeine is due to its action as a central nervous system stimulant. According to research, caffeine achieves this by blocking the action of adenosine, a neurotransmitter that promotes sleep and relaxation. This blockade leads to increased neuronal firing in the brain, causing the release of other neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine, which enhance alertness and attention. However, Larry also learns that his heightened alertness has its limits. Studies suggest that while caffeine can significantly improve attention and cognitive function, its effects can diminish with regular use as the body builds a tolerance. This explains why, on some days, Larry feels like he needs more coffee than usual to achieve the same level of wakefulness. He realizes that his body's adaptation to caffeine might be influencing his daily caffeine intake, leading him to consume more over time. At his part-time job as a barista, Larry observes similar effects on his customers. Many regulars admit they rely on their morning coffee to kickstart their day. This widespread reliance on caffeine for alertness is echoed in scientific research, which notes that caffeine is one of the most commonly used psychoactive substances in the world. Larry starts to understand the scale of caffeine's impact on daily functioning for people of all walks of life. These insights prompt Larry to reflect on his own caffeine use. He begins to question whether his dependence on caffeine for alertness is a short-term solution with potential long-term implications. Larry's story illustrates a common scenario where caffeine is used as a quick fix to counteract tiredness, often overlooking its broader effects on the body and mind. As an active individual, Larry often incorporates caffeine into his pre-workout routine, usually in the form of a cup of coffee or a caffeinated energy drink. He has noticed an improvement in his endurance and overall physical performance during his runs and gym sessions. Curious about this phenomenon, Larry hops on Google and discovers a study that explains how caffeine enhances physical performance. The study indicates that caffeine increases the concentration of adrenaline in the blood, a hormone that prepares the body for intense physical exertion. This increase in adrenaline boosts Larry's physical capacity, allowing him to run faster and train harder. Additionally, Larry learns that caffeine can enhance muscle endurance and reduce the perception of effort during physical activity. This is particularly beneficial for endurance sports, where sustained performance is crucial. According to several studies, caffeine can improve endurance by mobilizing fat stores, leading to the conservation of glycogen, the body's primary source of energy during prolonged exercise. This means that Larry can exercise for longer without feeling exhausted, as his body utilizes fat as an additional energy source more effectively. However, Larry also comes across research warning about the potential downsides of excessive caffeine consumption before exercise. Doctors caution that too much caffeine can lead to side effects, such as increased heart rate, anxiety, and gastrointestinal discomfort, which can of course hinder athletic performance. Larry realizes the importance of balancing his caffeine intake to optimize his workouts without experiencing all these negative effects. Through his experiences and research, Larry starts to understand the delicate balance required in using caffeine to boost physical performance. He learns to moderate his caffeine consumption before exercising, ensuring he reaps the benefits without overdoing it. Larry's story highlights the role caffeine can play in enhancing athletic performance, provided it's consumed in moderation and with an understanding of one's personal tolerance and health conditions. But before we go any further with Larry's story, we have a question for you. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a human who lives in this world who's going through a hard time, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. 
BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com slash infographics. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gives you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, if you don't really fit with your therapist, which is a common thing with therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost, without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash infographics. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel. Now back to Larry. One afternoon, while working his shift at the coffee shop, Larry notices his heart feels like it's beating faster than usual. This sensation becomes more pronounced after he consumes his second cup of coffee. Concerned, Larry decides to investigate and learns about caffeine's stimulatory effect on the cardiovascular system. Studies from cardiologists and other heart specialists reveal that caffeine can lead to a temporary increase in heart rate. This effect occurs because caffeine stimulates the central nervous system, which in turn can increase heart rate and contractility. For Larry, this scientific explanation sheds light on his experiences, especially on days where his caffeine intake is high. However, Larry also discovers that the effect of caffeine on heart rate varies from person to person. Factors such as individual tolerance, the amount of caffeine consumed, and even genetic predisposition can influence how one's heart rate responds to caffeine. He comes across studies suggesting that genetic differences can affect the metabolism and cardiovascular response to caffeine. This information makes Larry realize that his sensitivity to caffeine might be different from others, explaining why some people can drink multiple cups of coffee without any noticeable change in heart rate. As a barista, Larry observes a diverse range of reactions to caffeine amongst his customers. Some appear unaffected, while others, like himself, experience noticeable changes in their heart rate and overall energy levels. This observation aligns with the research findings and highlights the importance of understanding and respecting individual differences in caffeine sensitivity. Armed with his new knowledge, Larry becomes more mindful of his caffeine consumption, especially on busy days at work or before his studies. He begins to monitor his body signals more closely, ensuring that he enjoys his coffee in a way that doesn't overstimulate his heart. As he becomes more curious about his relationship with caffeine, Larry starts noticing an increased need to use the restroom on days when his caffeine intake is high. Initially, he attributes this to simply drinking more liquids, but his curiosity leads him to research further. He finds a study that explains caffeine's diuretic effect, particularly when consumed in large amounts. The study points out that caffeine can increase blood flow to the kidneys, leading to increased urine production. This diuretic effect explains Larry's frequent bathroom breaks and highlights an important aspect of caffeine consumption that is often overlooked. However, Larry also learns that the diuretic effect of caffeine might not be as significant for regular caffeine consumers. Yet another study suggests that regular caffeine users may develop a tolerance to its diuretic effects. For Larry, this information is reassuring as it indicates that his body might adapt to his regular coffee consumption. However, he still decides to be mindful of his fluid intake, especially on days where he consumes more caffeine than usual to avoid dehydration. To counteract the potential dehydrating effects of caffeine, Larry starts to consciously increase his water intake. He ensures that for every cup of coffee he drinks, he also drinks a glass of water. This habit not only helps to maintain his hydration, but also allows him to enjoy his coffee without worrying about dehydration. Over time, Larry notices that this balanced approach helps to reduce the frequency of his bathroom visits and improves his overall feeling of well-being. A while later, during one of his regular health checkups, Larry is surprised to find that his blood pressure is slightly elevated. Concerned, he delves into research to understand if his caffeine consumption could be a contributing factor. His findings led him to a study reporting that caffeine can cause short-term increases in blood pressure. The study explains that caffeine can temporarily block a hormone that help keep arteries widened, causing them to narrow and leading to higher blood pressure. For Larry, who consumes caffeine regularly, this information is a revelation, as he begins to see a potential link between his coffee habits and his blood pressure readings. Intrigued by these findings, Larry starts to track his blood pressure in relation to his caffeine intake. He notices that on days when he drinks more coffee, especially strong brews, his blood pressure tends to spike. This observation is consistent with research that suggests that blood pressure response to caffeine 
varies among individuals. Some people may experience more significant effects than others, possibly due to genetic differences in how their bodies process caffeine. Despite these findings, Larry also learns that the long-term impact of caffeine on blood pressure is less clear. Studies indicate that while caffeine can cause a temporary spike in blood pressure, its long-term effects on hypertension risk are still a subject of ongoing research. A review in the Journal of American College of Cardiology suggests that habitual caffeine consumption does not significantly increase the risk of hypertension in most individuals. This information provides some reassurance to Larry, but he decides to remain cautious and monitor his intake. As a result of his research and observations, Larry keeps moderating his caffeine consumption, especially on days where he feels stressed or anxious. As these factors can also influence blood pressure, he opts for smaller servings and occasionally switches to decaffeinated options. But then as the semester at college intensifies, Larry finds himself relying more on caffeine to stay alert during his studies. He started to notice that on days when his caffeine intake is particularly high, he feels unusually jittery and anxious. Curious about this correlation, Larry researches and discovers that caffeine can indeed exacerbate feelings of anxiety and nervousness. Research reveals that caffeine stimulates the central nervous system, which can increase anxiety levels, especially in individuals prone to anxiety disorders. For Larry, this information is eye-opening as he begins to understand the fine line between the stimulating effects of caffeine and its potential to heighten anxiety. Further exploring this topic, Larry learns about the physiological mechanisms behind these feelings. Caffeine can mimic symptoms of anxiety, such as increased heart rate, restlessness, and nervous jitters. Several scientific publications explain that these effects result from caffeine's action on adenosine receptors in the brain, which can disrupt the normal calming function of adenosine. Larry realizes that what he thought was just a harmful energy boost could actually be contributing to his feelings of unease and restlessness. In his role as a barista, Larry observes that he's not alone in experiencing these effects. He encounters customers who have had similar reactions to caffeine, some even opting for decaf options to avoid the anxiety-inducing effects. This broader perspective validates his experiences and shows evidence of variability in individual reactions to caffeine. It underscores the importance of understanding your own tolerance levels and the potential mental health implications of excessive caffeine consumption for you specifically. Taking this new knowledge into account, Larry decides to be even more mindful of his caffeine intake, especially during stressful periods. He begins to limit the number of caffeinated beverages he consumes, and explores alternative ways to boost his energy, like short walks or power naps. Over time, Larry begins to notice a pattern in his sleep quality, especially on days with high caffeine intake. He often struggles to fall asleep, experiencing restlessness and frequent awakenings throughout the night. Concerned about these sleep disturbances, Larry starts researching and uncovers a study that explains how caffeine disrupts sleep patterns. The study highlights that caffeine can interfere with circadian rhythms, the internal clock that regulates the sleep-wake cycle. Caffeine's ability to block adenosine, a neurotransmitter that promotes sleep, can lead to difficulties in initiating and maintaining sleep. For Larry, this revelation is concerning, as quality sleep is essential for his academic performance and overall well-being. Delving deeper into the science of sleep and caffeine, Larry finds that the timing of caffeine consumption plays a critical role. Studies in sleep medicine journals report that consuming caffeine even six hours before bedtime can significantly disrupt sleep quality. This is due to caffeine's long half-life, which means it can stay in the body for several hours after consumption. Larry realizes that his habit of drinking coffee or energy drinks in the late afternoon or evening could be a major contributor to his sleep issues. To improve his quality of sleep, Larry decides to experiment with reducing his caffeine intake, particularly in the latter half of the day. He sets a personal cutoff time for caffeine consumption, opting for non-caffeinated beverages in the evening. Gradually, Larry begins to notice an improvement in his ability to fall asleep and the overall quality of his sleep. As finals week approaches, Larry decides to further cut back on his caffeine intake to improve his sleep and reduce anxiety. However, he quickly encounters an unexpected challenge withdrawal symptoms. Within a day of reducing his coffee consumption, Larry experiences headaches, irritability, and a noticeable lack of concentration. These symptoms lead him to research caffeine withdrawal, and he finds a whole host of research explaining his experiences. The study indicates that caffeine withdrawal can trigger various symptoms, including headaches, fatigue, and mood changes. These symptoms occur because the body becomes accustomed to the stimulant effects of caffeine, and suddenly reducing intake 
disrupts the established neurochemical balance. Larry learns that the severity and duration of the withdrawal symptoms can vary depending on the amount of caffeine regularly consumed and individual sensitivity. Research suggests that habitual high consumption of caffeine can lead to more pronounced withdrawal symptoms. For Larry, this information sheds light on his body's reaction to reduced caffeine intake, as he typically consumes several cups of coffee a day. Determined to overcome these nasty withdrawal symptoms, Larry continues to gradually reduce his caffeine intake rather than stopping abruptly. He's begun to replace some of his regular coffee servings with decaffeinated options and has increased his water intake. Over time, he notices that his withdrawal symptoms begin to subside, and he starts to feel more balanced and less dependent on caffeine for energy and focus. This gradual approach helps his body adjust more comfortably to the reduced caffeine levels. Throughout his journey of adjusting caffeine intake, Larry begins to notice a correlation between his coffee consumption and certain digestive discomforts. He frequently experiences stomach acidity and occasional heartburn, particularly after drinking his morning espresso. Intrigued by this pattern, Larry delves into research and discovers a study that explains that caffeine can stimulate the production of stomach acid. This increased acidity can lead to gastrointestinal discomfort, such as acid reflux or heartburn. For Larry, understanding this link between caffeine and stomach acidity makes everything make sense. It explains the digestive issues that have been bothering him for so long. Further exploring the effects of caffeine on digestion, Larry learns that while coffee can stimulate acid production, it can also promote bowel movements. He found a study claiming that caffeine can increase peristalsis, or the movement of food through the digestive tract. While this can be beneficial for some, for others, like Larry, it can lead to digestive irregularities and discomfort, particularly on an empty stomach. Determined to offset the uncomfortable digestive effects, Larry starts experimenting with his coffee routine. He tries consuming a smaller amount of coffee, drinking it after meals rather than on an empty stomach, and occasionally switching to a low-acidity coffee blend. These adjustments make a noticeable difference in reducing his stomach discomfort. Larry realizes that how and when he drinks his coffee can significantly impact his digestive health. Larry's experience highlights an important aspect of caffeine consumption that often goes unnoticed, its impact on the digestive system. While caffeine can have many positive effects, it's crucial to be aware of and manage its potential impact on digestion. Larry's journey encourages a more mindful approach to caffeine consumption, emphasizing the importance of listening to one's body and making adjustments as needed for overall health and comfort. In his quest to understand the full spectrum of caffeine's effects, Larry stumbles upon an intriguing benefit that often gets overshadowed by its more immediate impacts, the antioxidant properties of coffee. Compounds found in coffee, such as chlorogenic acid and melanoidins, are known for their ability to neutralize free radicals, which can cause cellular damage and contribute to aging and various diseases. For Larry, this discovery is a pleasant surprise, offering a positive angle to his regular coffee consumption. Encouraged by this information, Larry delves deeper into the health benefits of those antioxidants. He learns from further research that the antioxidants in coffee can help reduce inflammation in the body potentially lowering the risk of some chronic diseases like heart disease and type 2 diabetes. This revelation provides Larry with a broader perspective on his coffee drinking habits, allowing him to appreciate not just the immediate effects of caffeine but also its long-term health benefits. However, Larry also understands the importance of balance. He now knows that while moderate coffee consumption can be beneficial, excessive intake can lead to negative effects such as increased anxiety and disrupted sleep. With this in mind, Larry decides to continue enjoying his coffee but ensures he does so in moderation, maintaining a balance that allows him to reap the antioxidant benefits without experiencing the adverse effects of too much caffeine. Larry's newfound appreciation for the antioxidant properties of coffee adds a new dimension to his understanding of his drink of choice. It highlights the complexity of substances like caffeine, which can have a range of effects on the body, both positive and negative. If you're looking to reduce your caffeine intake, here are some practical tips to help you do so without experiencing significant discomfort, so you can be living like Larry in no time. First, start by gradually decreasing your caffeine consumption. Abruptly stopping can lead to withdrawal symptoms like headaches and irritability. If you usually drink several cups of coffee a day, try eliminating one cup at a time or gradually reducing the size of each cup. You can also switch to lower caffeine options, such as replacing one of your regular coffees with green tea. Another effective strategy is to blend decaffeinated coffee with your regular coffee, slowly increasing the proportion of decaf over time. This way, you can reduce your caffeine intake 
without significantly altering your routine. In addition to cutting back on caffeine, focus on improving your sleep quality and managing stress, as those are often reasons people turn to caffeine in the first place. Implementing a relaxing bedtime routine, ensuring your sleeping environment is comfortable, and practicing stress reduction techniques like meditation or deep breathing can help you reduce your reliance on caffeine. Also, consider alternative energy-boosting strategies like taking short walks, engaging in light exercise, or eating energy-sustaining snacks like nuts and fruits. And of course, the most important thing to remember of all, stay hydrated. Sometimes what feels like a caffeine craving is actually dehydration. Drinking water can not only help you reduce caffeine consumption, but also keep you alert and refreshed. Remember, making changes to your caffeine intake is a personal journey, and it's important to listen to your body and adjust your approach as needed. By following these tips, you can successfully manage your caffeine intake while maintaining your energy and well-being. Now check out what happens to your body when you stop drinking coffee minute by minute, or watch this instead.